Um, as most of you know, he's entitled to $4 million uh, under the contract. That's not a lump sum payment. That is a payment in the normal course of, it's Wednesday, it's check day, it's next Wednesday, it's check day. So, you know, I didn't go to Purdue, but that's about $1.3 million a year, if my math is close, um, that, he, that he would be paid out um, over, over time. And, and that's a lot of money, I want to minimize that, but on a $100 million budget, that's, that's, that's money we can um, uh, commit to that. Now, the big thing that often gets left out is um, um, the contract calls for mitigation set off, which means if he gets a comparable job in professional basketball, college basketball, or a media personality, um, then um, that money is set off dollar for dollar with what you would owe him. So at $1.3 million a year, you know, if he gets another coaching job, we'll, we'll probably not owe him anything. Um, so the, the buyout was really a non-issue. I know there was some talk of, you know, especially in 2014 about whether the buyout was keeping his job. It, I'm just telling you it was not, because even then, I think the buyout would have been over a longer period of time and we would have ended up not paying much of that anyway. He, he was here um, because I wanted him to be here, and now he's uh, not here um, for the converse reason and not, not because the buyout is one place or another. Um, so the, 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 cost, the, the primary potential cost of the transition is the $4 million, which we may or may not owe Tom. And then there's about $700,000 of, of, of uh, separation costs for other staff that normally would be expected to, uh, to uh, uh, leave as well. But most of that's also subject to the, the mitigation and set off that I described. So much of that might, might go away as well. In terms of the staff, I should mention that um, our hope may be much like the um, uh, much like the players is that uh, well, maybe all different players, but the new uh, coach would would look at them and talk to them um, and uh, um, make a decision about whether they would stay or not. But, but, but as of this point, I would expect um, those folks to stay. When the players do return, has anyone been appointed to oversee team activities, team workouts, anything like that? Yeah, we we've put together a, like a transition group. Uh, longtime trainer Tim Garl and uh, and Derek Elston. Uh, as you know, former former player and current staff member, will work with Maddie White and Scott Dolson to uh, to oversee the team team activities. Fred, did you come to the decision last night or this morning? And, and, it, and it, did you have any conversations with Tom that he try and uh, pitch come on the season? Yeah, um, Tom and I had a uh, couple. I mean, we talk almost every day, um, sometimes by text, but. We, we would talk almost every day, but we, we had two specific uh, conversations about the future and what I saw as my uh, options uh, going forward, and they were very, very positive. He was very relaxed and, and non-defensive, and, and I really appreciated those conversations a great deal. Um, and, um, but uh, last night, um, uh, after I had a chance to really kind of um, uh, absorb and, and, and consider everything and feeling that a decision needed to be made. Um, I, 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 I felt like it would be bad for everybody to sort of leave him twisting, even though he always maybe went a few more days. Um, it's kind of like they tell me, Lauren Michael says that, uh, that, that on Saturday Night Live, they, they don't go on because they're ready, they go on because it's 11.30 on Saturday night. So, so, so this decision, I felt like I was, I was ready. I don't mean to um, uh, be dismissive of that, but, but I think I thought it needed to be made, and that's why I made it uh, last night, and then communicated that to Tom this morning, and, and then and here we are. It, it might be worth mentioning too, because I talked about what I viewed to be the options that I had, and I, and I talked about it to Tom in this context. Um, Obviously, three years left from his contract. It seemed to me that at this point in time, I either needed to um, extend his contract and give him a vote of confidence he needed um, with with actions, not words, with an extension. Um, be prepared to allow him to go forward um, without an extension um, or make a change. 
And I concluded that the extension wasn't something that I was prepared to do because even though we have had success, I just think both between and within seasons, it's just been too inconsistent for our expectations. Um, and it was very tempting to go with the second option of allowing him to go forward um, without the extension. And, and I think to his great credit, he was willing to do that. Um, which I think would have been a very hard thing for him to do. But I, I gotta tell you, he, he loves Indiana. And he loves living here, and he, and he loves his kids going to school here. And, and, I, I think, and I think he felt like he could win, and he was willing to bet on himself, and I admire that, and I appreciate that. Um, in the final analysis, I wasn't comfortable going forward with, with that, because um, given that, that he would only have three years left, given that I would very publicly uh, not give him an extension, um, I think he would have been on the hot seat from day one. And I think every ebb and flow of, of the season, which happens to every program, would have been blown out of proportion. Um, and everybody would say, well, is this it? Is, is he going to get fired early? Is he going to make it till the end of the year? Which I think, I think would have been very, very uh, hard on him. But that's his business. But what's my business is, um, how hard that would be on the program. And, and I thought that would be too hard on the program to, um, to, to be a justifiable option. So um, that was my analysis. Um, that's why I ended up at, uh, at door number three um, and, and uh, um, made that decision last night. Brad. Hedger. I've watched your demeanor at the, at the Georgia Tech game, and you look very anguished during the game. And obviously, the, the score wasn't very good. But how tough has this been on you to do this as the athletic director of Indiana? Well, first, I want to, I want to thank uh, the HT staff photographer for catching me in a particularly anguished moment and sharing it with the world. Um, first of all, I'm a fan first, OK? I mean. Born in Indianapolis, I've been a Hoosier fan my whole life. I made little crafts when I was in my kindergarten. Um, you know, skipped school to welcome the '76 team back. Got a championship in '81 when I was a senior. And so, you know, I'm the athletic director, and I have to be a dispassionate steward. But I'm, but I'm also a fan. And um, you know, we would get close and not get over the over the hump. So, so part of that was was you know being a fan, watching. Um, Watching the game, um, yeah, this, you know, this is, you know, it's hard for me, but, but, you know, that's part of my job, and it's not anywhere near as hard on me as it is on, on um, Tom and and uh, um, Joni and Ainsley and Riley and Megan. So, um, you know, and the other families affected. That's who I feel for. Chris, we we'll see some mistakes made in the last couple of uh, basketball searches. School has done, and you adjust your process. Do that. Well, um, I'm not going to second guess or, 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 or pick on decisions that were made previously, but I've, I've studied those and and talked to some of the people involved, and feel like we're setting up a structure that uh, that that I think will be effective. From a pure logistical standpoint, Fred, do you think it's tenable to hire a sitting NBA coach right now, a head coach? Right now? Um, ultimately, if someone wants to be the head coach at Indiana University, um, I think that's a detail. Fred, what point in the season did this course of action first pop into your mind? At what point did you think this might be a decision you had to make? Um, well, look, going into a year where he was going to have three years left at the end, um, sort of knew that it was, there was going to be probably a big decision, whether it's an extension or, or, or something else. So it, it wasn't in reaction to like a bad streak or anything else. Um, but I think, uh, I think, I know I know, and I think Tom knew that, that, that it, you know, this was going to be a big year. Was there any serious consideration last year when they won the Big Ten title to give you an extension at that point? Um, we decided not to do that. It wasn't a big discussion. Have you heard yet of getting calls or things from people that are interested in 
Yes. Yes.